Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Here's an Arduino project that allows you to incrementally increase the speed uh, or step up the speed. In this case, I have five distinct speeds, um, each one stepping up to a higher speed uh, than the previous one. And it's responding to this button and I have a debouncing uh, element to this um, the same actually didn't have to uh, tear this down this is the exact same uh, debouncing circuit from the previous video if you've seen that explaining debouncing so there's a debouncing element to this uh, but there's also another function that we use to uh, store uh, a predetermined set speeds and we're going to increment the variable and it's going to return a value to that function and based on that value, uh, it'll step to the next uh, higher speed. Let me hook up, and it runs off this 9-volt battery. I've got another video that um, showed this basic circuit here on uh, powering the little hobby motor. <clears throat> so oh, I have to hook the USB cable up, power this up. Now here, it, initially is off and one press of the button and we have a low speed for the motor and the next one will be a little bit faster and again stepping up and there's five individual speeds each pro progressively faster and then after the fifth one, that's the fifth speed, that's the highest speed. And then it turns off. Now this little hobby motor here, uh, I found that uh, there's, a, there's a certain value that if you go below, uh, it's not going, you can hear that the, the coils are energized, but uh, it has to be able to overcome some initial resistance that the motor has to starting to spin and so your your selection for your pulse width modulation the lowest setting uh, might differ for the motor that you're using uh, if you have a really sensitive motor you might be able to go a bit lower and also <clears throat> you don't have to necessarily just have five speeds you can break that up into more or fewer speeds with the sketch that I'm, I'm going to show you in a second if you can see there Again, um, it's the first speed, but this time it's not spinning. I don't know if you, you probably can't hear that, but there's a there's a high pitched frequency you can hear uh, from the the coils on this being energized. So give it a little a little push, a little help there, and now it's spinning. So that's right on the edge of uh, whether it'll start on the first speed there or not. So let's go take a look at the sketch. Well, let me show you the, the circuit real quick. Very simple here. So we just have an NPN transistor driving this motor. And we also have this diode capacitor combination uh, the capacitor sort of acts as a filter for noise uh, that the motor produces. And you've got the diode. I mean, in this case, it's a 9-volt battery. But um, when, when the field collapses uh, through the coils on this motor, when you do like a sudden stop, uh, there's a reverse voltage that gets created. And that could damage um, like the supply. So you have this, this diode for it's a protection circuit. But in this case, it's really not going to damage a 9-volt battery. So the base of the NPN transistor is connected to pin 9. And we're going to use an analog write. Uh, if you notice on the uh, Arduino, uh, some of the digital pins have like a little sine wave 
or um, the squiggly line, uh, those particular pins uh, can all, they have the uh, feature of using a pulse width uh, modulation on those pins. And that allows you to change uh, sort of like the duty cycle or the uh, on and off times, which allows you to increase uh, the drive on this transistor and increase the speed of the motor. And what that means is if it had a, a graph here showing, if you have a 9 volt battery and this is time, and this is time, you know that at each point in time, no matter, you know, where you look, you're going to have 9 volts. So as you progress down this time, axis here, you always have the 9 volts. Um, with pulse width modulation, um, you can sort of simulate that 9 volts, but <clears throat> if you had a square wave with a 50% duty cycle, so it's 50% on and 50% off, it's sort of intuitive, you know, that um, so it's on only on these two segments of time as opposed to, you know, a full 9 volts from a battery. This is going to be able to supply 50% less voltage than the 9 volts, the straight 9 volts. With the pulse width modulation, you can change the amount of on and off time. So, as you increase the pulse width modulation, you can then, you know, expand this so there's less off time and more on time. And that's what you're varying when you want to increase the speed. So this is going to give you uh, more voltage to drive the base of that transistor and that will increase. So this, this is fast. This is going to step the motor speed up from the, the previous one, which was 50-50. And then, you know, you could then increase that some more. And that's what you're doing when you're, when you're doing the analog right and sending a certain value with the analog right function. You tell it what pin and uh, you give it a number from 0 uh, to 255. So that pulse width modulated signal is being sent to pin 9 through this 1K resistor to the base, which will then turn this transistor on even harder when you increase the pulse width modulation on pin 9. So let's go take a look at that sketch. So again, I'll paste this into like the first comment on this video. I found that that has a lot of room. I don't know if it's the same for the description. So incrementing motor speed control. I'm declaring these two variables associated with uh, motor with pin 9 and the button with pin 2 just like the previous one uh, with the um, being able to detect the transition from the zero volts to the five volts we're doing a digital read on pin two so this is this is exactly the same for this debouncing uh, portion um, same as the previous video we got the, the last button initializing to low, current button initializing to low, and here I have uh, what I'm using for speed increment uh, to keep track of the uh, speed or stepping the speed. Void setup, pin mode, we've got the motor we're declaring as an output and the button as an input. This is the debouncing circuit here, uh, debouncing portion of the sketch, just like the previous. And remember this is a function that we're creating uh, ourselves 
Uh, these are other functions that are already built in, similar to these. There are already other functions built into the uh, Arduino IDE. That's what's happening behind the scenes. So this is the debouncing function. And this here is the motor speed selection function. So we're going to pass a number to this. And that number determines the speed of the motor or the, and, or the value. It's going to uh, determine the value that we do in analog right which adjusts the pulse width modulation on pin 9. So this is speed 1. If increment, that's the variable that we're going to be incrementing to step through these individual speeds. If increment is equal to pin 1, uh, to the value of 1, the very first analog right we're going to do is uh, motor. We have to, two arguments here for the uh, analog right and its motor which is uh, has the pin 9 associated with it and then this is the uh, value that uh, is associated with the pulse width modulation so your motor might be different and you can add to this or subtract to this I, ha I, I chose five individual speeds uh, I found that 51 is about, as you saw that it got stuck at that one, that one instance. Um, so it has to overcome that initial uh, resistance to motion. Once it gets up and spinning though, it's all set and it, it's sort of intermittent whether it's going to start on the first uh, speed or not at this setting. And then it's just a bunch of else if. So if it's not one and it's two, if increment is equal to 2, it's going to do this speed. If it's not 2, it's going to, you know, and it's 3, it'll do this speed. And these are the five speeds. And then on the sixth, I want to set the pulse width modulation to 0, a value of 0, which uh, makes sure that the motor is off. Now here's a loop that is used to uh, use that value returned from the debouncing circuit to check whether the um, last button is, equal, is low or um, is low and uh, current button is high. That tells us that you know, we've in fact had a button press and there's been a transition. And uh, a little bit different here from the last sketch is that this is what uh, I use for speed increment we increment this, and last one I think we had LED on, it was not LED on, so it was the opposite, so that toggled that variable value. So we increment it every time that button is pressed, or detected that it's pressed, and then again uh, the current button is reset to the last value. And here, if cycled through all speed increments, we're going to reset the speed again to zero. If speed increment is equal to six, speed increment to zero. So we're just uh, making sure that the motor is uh, reset to zero. And set speed, speed increment. This is, this incremented value gets returned to this function here that then d depending on its value chooses which speed that we just went through these five individual speeds and again you can add to that or subtract to that you know you could have as many increments as you want and that's essentially there I'm sure there are plenty of other ways to go about stepping through um, some predetermined speeds uh, but that's the way that I've done it here so again this is uh, an example of incrementing stepping up speeds with the Arduino oh, see so it got stuck again give that a little bit of help 
So, I hope you found this video interesting. Feel free to like, subscribe, and or comment. Oop, and thanks for watching. I could do my nails with this.